Welcome back to a special episode of To The Point on the day the people of Kashmir have spoken and they've chosen a hunger assembly. Joining me now is the outgoing Chief Minister of the State, Omar Abdullah. Omar Abdullah, your party has ended up with 15 seats of your own and two independents who you supported and that together is far more than the pollsters predicted. Even though you may have lost power, are you reasonably satisfied with the outcome? Well, actually, I'm very satisfied. If you look at where we started from, I mean, I know everybody is taking it as a starting point of 28. But for me, really, the starting point is uh, the parliament elections of this year, where we carried three assembly constituencies and all three in Sirinagar. Therefore, uh, to go from three assembly constituencies seven months ago to 15 of our own and two independents that we've supported, I, I actually take a lot of satisfaction from that. In fact, if I understand correctly, you, you have representation, including our independence, in all the three regions. The valley, Jammu, when, when I say Jammu, I mean the plains of Jammu, and the independent you supported is in Radak. So you're one of the few parties that's represented in all three of the regions of the state. Well, we're actually one of only two parties. Uh, the Congress and the National Conference are the only two parties with representation in all three parts of the state. But an in another interesting statistic which somebody shared with me is that the National Conference is the only party other than the BJP that has Hindu MLAs. Uh, we have two Hindu MLAs in the National Conference uh, and the other only other party with Hindu MLAs is the BJP. So if anyone has actually put a check to, to the sort of polarization that has been attempted and, and the, the, the voting along religious lines, it's the National Conference and, and no other party. Now speaking about yourself, you won Birwa, but you lost Sonawar. Was that what you were expecting? I should add for the sake of the audience that going by the parliamentary results, your party was in third and fourth position in those constituencies. So to even win one of them is actually quite a feat after May. Well, yeah, I, I knew Sonwar was going to be tough. I'll be honest with you, I had expected uh, Birwa to be a slightly more comfortable uh, victory, but tell you, uh, even one vote uh, is, is a victory and therefore I won't grudge myself that. Uh, Birwa was a seat that we hadn't won for 12 years, so I stuck my neck out there. And uh, Sonwar was pretty badly hit by the floods. But then it was also a seat that the National Conference had represented three times in the past. Therefore we were facing our own internal anti-incumbency there. So both the seats were actually a huge gamble and fortunately one paid off. You were, in fact, at one point of time trailing in Birwa, and a couple of channels actually announced that you'd lost Birwa. At that point of time, did you think that your political future was finished? Yeah, I was actually weighing my options. And, I mean, obviously one of the most uh, serious options I was weighing was to just come out and tell my colleagues that, look, this is it, I'm done. Uh, I have no business being in politics and uh, you guys better go and find somebody else to take you forward. But uh, fortunately it didn't come to that. Now when you look back over the last six years, what are the events, what are the decisions that to your mind explain the fact that after winning 28 seats in 2008, you've come down to 15 now as a result of which you're probably going to lose power. How do you explain that slide? I think uh, it's not so much parties. Uh, I, I don't see this as a pro-PDP or a pro-anti-NC or anti-Congress anti vote. I think what has happened in this election is that people have looked for new faces. And out of 87 seats, actually 69 are new faces. Only 25 odd are repeats. And, and therefore, possibly the National Conference could have fielded a few more new faces in this election. And, and maybe that would have helped us. So I, I don't think there's any one single factor. Yes, 2010 was used against us by the PDP. The Afzal Guru execution uh, was an issue that the PDP tried to highlight in, in the valley. And uh, obviously the floods uh, uh, was, was, was something that uh, was used to, to good effect by the PDP, particularly in Sirinagar. But there really wasn't one, one overwhelming trend that affected these elections. Now. Let's look at the overall result. The PDP is the single largest party, but the BJP is literally just three seats behind them. Is this, in your estimation, disappointing for the PDP, whilst good news for the BJP? 
Well, I think the good news for the BJP is that their strike rate in Jammu has improved significantly. But this, this election wasn't just about that. Having just won a parliament seat in Ladakh, I'm sure they were expecting to open their account there as well. And to have lost all four seats in Ladakh must have been a, uh, quite a blow to them. And I think they would have definitely liked to have seen some seats come their way in the valley. Uh, so to have lost all the seats in the valley as well uh, would not have made for pretty reading for, for the BJP. Uh, so while they'll take a lot of satisfaction from Jammu, I think Jammu was anyway going to go with them. Uh, uh, none of this Mission 44 or anything like that changed anything in Jammu. They were riding the Narendra Modi wave and they rode it to great effect in, in Jammu. The valley has been a letdown for them. As far as the PDP is concerned, this was their election to win. And the fact that they've done, uh, I mean, they stopped at 28, I think... Privately, uh, most PDP people will tell you that they're disappointed. I have no doubt that they were pegging themselves for 35 plus. So to have stopped at 28 uh, would be a matter of considerable disappointment for the PDP. Now, one of the things that has become very clear is that the Valley has voted substantially differently to the way the Jammu region has voted. And the traditional regional divide now looks as if it's also been overlaid by a religious divide. Is that an outcome that worries you? Well, it does worry me, but I'm hoping that it's a one-off. I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting this, the, the BJP's performance in Jammu more down to the Narendra Modi factor than to any sort of religious polarization. Yes, that also played a part, but uh, I, I think it was more uh, the, the sort of N Modi wave that swept the BJP in, in Jammu. This is a one-off. There isn't going to be another Modi wave six years down the road. So hopefully uh, we won't see this sort of polarization going ahead. But again, it's, it's, it's based more on hope than anything else at the moment. Let's look at this question of government formation, because at the end of the day, you have a fairly sharply hung assembly in Srinagar. Earlier this evening on another channel, you said that you had left a crack open to support the PDP but it was really dependent upon Mufti Saeed ringing you. As you put it, you weren't going to walk down the road, but if the phone rang, you'd pick it up. What is it that Mufti Saeed has to say that might convince you to extend support to a government he forms? Well, it's, it's purely up to him. Does he want a government together with the BJP? Or would he rather set up a government supported by a regional party so that he can deal with the state's agenda without having to be uh, dependent for approval from a national party. I know what it's like to govern uh, this state uh, dependent on a national party for, for the majority. Uh, I mean, it, I make no secret of the fact that I would have moved forward on AFSPA if I didn't have uh, to depend on the Congress for the numbers. And there are other issues as well uh, of a similar nature. So, I mean, it, it really is for Mufti Sayyid to decide. Uh, does he want to compromise his agenda and tie up with the BJP or does he want to put the state forward? But are you simply and suggesting that if he were to ring you, you would extend support? Would there not be some conditions you'd want met, some assurances you'd want guaranteed before you said yes? Or is it just a phone call that's needed before you're on his side? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not hankering for power and I'm not looking for, for any sort of uh, uh, stops for myself. But certainly, I mean, it's not as if he just has to pick up the phone and snap his fingers and I'm going to uh, go bowing and scraping. There will be a conversation, as I'm sure, were he to talk to the BJP, uh, there would be a conversation uh, for, for, for that, that understanding as well. Uh, it's that conversation I'm trying to explore with you. What are the issues that you would want him to clarify? What are the terms and conditions you'd like him to set down so that you can say yes? Let the phone ring, Karan. I'll have this conversation if it rings. I'm, there's no point a hypothetical conversation between you and me. All right, let me put it like this. Have you thought through what you'd say to him if he asks for support? What conditions you'd want met? What assurances you'd want guaranteed? Have you thought that through? Well, you'd be surprised, but I've actually been thinking about this for about 15 days now. So yeah, I, I have a fair idea uh, in my mind what I'd like to see happening. Can I ask, why have you been thinking about this for 15 days? 
Is this something that was actually... Because I pretty much knew, I, I pretty much knew which way we were heading. Uh, I was very realistic about our chances in this election. I wasn't as pessimistic as the opinion polls would have liked me to be, but I wasn't overly optimistic as well. I knew I was fighting this election with my back to the wall. And therefore, as far as I'm concerned, 15 plus 2 ind independence is a very respectable show. But I really wasn't expecting to be in a position to stake claim for power uh, at the end of today. But the other important thing that you're saying is that if you were thinking about this for 15 days, then for 15 days you were mentally willing, in theory, to support a PDP government provided Mr. Said was there and willing to give you the assurances that you want the conditions and terms that you want. For 15 days, you've been carefully thinking about this, and that's quite an important thing you're saying. It's not something that you just announced Karan, surprisingly Karan, this I'm, afternoon. I'm a, no, no, I, 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 don't, I don't make spur-of-the-moment decisions. It's not my nature. I'm a lot more careful about, and I have become even more so over the last six years. I don't just come out with random utterances without giving them some thought. So yes, I've actually played out all possible permutations and combinations in my mind over the last 15, 20 days. What was it that may lay behind your thinking that you could support a PDP government? Are you doing it because you want to make sure Congress doesn't? Are you doing it because you want to keep BJP out? Are you doing it because you believe regional parties getting together is in the best interest of the state rather than a regional party allying with the national party. What's the motivation behind this thinking? I, I think it's a combination of factors. Having seen what happens to a regional party when it has to tie up with a national party, and I've seen that happen to me over the last six years, look, I have no interest in, in keeping the Congress or the BJP out. As I said earlier, the onus on government formation rests primarily with the PDP and then with the BJP. I have only 17 MLAs and therefore for me to believe that I have the, the primary responsibility for government formation would be misplaced. But uh, as, as the, the working president of a party with 17 MLAs, I definitely uh, owe myself and my party uh, this much that I, I keep all options open and, and, and think about things like this. Now, if and, the, and plus, I think the, the seeds, no, let me finish. I think the seeds for this sort of thing were sown when I saw uh, Lalu Prasad Yadav and Nitish Kumar come together. If, if they can come together to form a regional combine, uh, I, I, I mean, why can't we look at it in JNK? Very true. Let me put this to you. If you were to come together, would your party seek a place in government with ministerships, etc.? Or would you be willing simply to support from outside? Again, Karan, this is not... I mean, it's, we're, we're talking in the realm of hypothetical. I mean, I, I would be amazed if the phone rang and, and it was somebody from the PDP on the other side. They're probably scratching their heads right now wondering what to do with me. Uh, because I don't think they expected anything quite like this. But then that's politics. I mean, the idea is to keep everybody guessing. Why should I be an easy person to, to, uh, to read or understand? So when you say the idea is to keep everyone guessing, it's possible you may just ex extend outside support and not ask for a seat in government, either for yourself or your party. I won't say anything beyond that. Right. Now, you actually thrown an incredible googly into the politics of Kashmir by speaking so openly and in such detail, particularly now this evening, you've gone into much greater detail than you did earlier this afternoon about the fact that you've been thinking of this for 15 days, you've worked out in your mind at least what sort of terms and conditions and assurances you'd want even if you won't make them public. In contrast, before the break on this very show, Muzaffar Hussain Beg told us how he has done a lot of thinking about the basis on which his party, the PDP, can ally with the BJP, why it makes sense, and how he would overcome the ideological obstacles in terms of an alliance. Would you, would you be happy if at the end of the day the PDP formed a government with the BJP and all that you've been saying on channels trying to, I suppose, attract their attention was ignored? I would have no problem with that either. I am very happy to spend the next six years in opposition. I think I've taken a lot of unnecessary stick from the PDP and even the BJP, uh, particularly over this campaign period. 
a lot of personalized attacks even from from the uh, uh, from the prime minister and others and therefore if the sum total of all this was to mean that uh, i would spend 6 years in the opposition then bring it on i'll be very happy to so you are resigned to the possibility and to many it looks like the fact that shortly now you will stop being chief minister and you will simply be an mla and in fact if the bjp and pdp don't form an alliance then you might not even be leader of the opposition you're resigned to all of that oh i'm very much resigned to it you know uh, a great a great man uh, very often said that uh, it is much nicer to be in the opposition than in government and he should know because he had experience of both and uh, I've, I, I actually look forward uh, with some degree of relish uh, to playing the part of an effective opposition leader. One last question: When you look at the results, it certainly seems to me that if Congress and the National Conference had stayed in alliance, you would have both done much better. The PDP considerably worse, and possibly the BJP too. Do you think now, with hindsight, particularly when you look at the outcome? that breaking that alliance has cost both of you and cost both of you substantially well unfortunately the parliament election showed that the congress turned out to be a rather dishonest electoral partner and our experience at their either lack of willingness or their inability to transfer votes meant that there was absolutely no question of us coming together for the assembly elections had they been in a position to transfer votes in the uh, in the parliament elections and had we been to some extent confident that they would have done the same in the assembly election we would have ex examined the options of fighting together but we saw in parliament most of their votes went to the went to the pdp and that's perhaps one of the reasons why we did better in the assembly elections without them all right omar abdullah you've been incredibly frank and extremely honest in revealing that for 15 days you've been thinking about the terms and conditions on which you might offer support to the pdp provided the phone rings if it does ring would you tweet and let the world know that mufti said was on the phone believe me i'm going to have a far more closer relationship with twitter now that i'm out of office uh, than i've had while i was in office because i took a lot of stick for tweeting as chief minister somehow it seems to be all right for the pm to do it but not all right for chief ministers to do it so yeah you'll hear a lot more from me on social media and otherwise including when the phone rings or including when the phone rings you know by the way that there was a very famous if it rings if, if if it rings you know there was a very famous cliff richard song the words of which were i keep waiting for the phone to ring though i know it's all in vain when you left me you took everything but the memories and the pain you sure you're not leading yourself up the garden path no i'll tell you more more than that karan this reminds me of the opening episode of yes minister when he's sitting by the phone waiting for a call from 10 downing street and one by one all the ministries are disappearing and he doesn't know if he's going to become a minister so You're waiting too. You don't know whether you're going to be a minister I'm or not. you're going to be an opposition I, I, leader. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just being a little light-hearted. No, I'm, I'm really not waiting. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to find something really nice to watch. I'm going to book my ticket to England, and day after tomorrow, I'm off to go and give my mum and dad the biggest hug. You know that song I was quoting from Cliff Richard? It ends with the words "Outsider, that's me." Is that how you see yourself? uh not quite no i i i think i'm very much an insider uh, uh beyond that really i don't know what else to say over of the la thank you very much for joining us my best wishes to your parents let them speedily recover from their surgery have a terrific christmas and see you in the new year thank you sir thank are you surprised the by the openness with which he's revealed that for 15 days he's been thinking of this possibility he's worked out in his mind the terms and conditions and the assurances he wants and that if the phone rings which it may not but if it does he's completely ready to tell mufti saab these are the terms on which i'll extend support are you surprised I by that i greatly welcome such transparency and uh, i've been very impressed with both uh, muzaffar hussain beg with whom i don't quite agree uh and with um, so with uh, omar abdullah with whom i do agree on a lot of things but uh it is impressive 
that uh, they are so transparent about it, but it's not surprising that they've been thinking about it. And wouldn't you? Obviously, it's necessary for these very big politicians to be considering alternative scenarios. I'm very happy that they are willing to share their thoughts with the general public. Very also, quickly. It also shows their maturity. It also shows their maturity and also the political preparedness of these two people, these two parties. How closely they have been working with the people and they have actually have the pulse of the people. Very, very quickly, because we're running out of time, do you accept the argument that Omar Abdullah was making that it is going to be more in the interests of the state if two regional parties ally and form a government than if a regional party has to depend on a national party? Uh -huh. And he was citing his own experience with Congress when he made that point. I think uh, both governments since 2002 have been coalition governments. And I think Umar Abdullah is right in there that it's very difficult to work with the national party there from the Kashmiri perspective. And also PDP, you know, received votes by criticizing the BJP in their, you know, opposition to Article 370 and other things. And I think it, uh, people of Kashmir would, be, would feel very insulting and humiliating if the, BJP, if the PDP goes on to, you know, forge alliance with the BJP. So in a sense, Umar Abdullah is reflecting the feelings of the Kashmiri people yes. when he's offering support to the PDP, provided they knock on his door first. Uh, yes. All right, no, gentlemen. I'm Mike. afraid not. I'm Obviously, afraid not. because you want to be part of that government. No, it's not that. It's not, <laughs> I can that. it's not that. I think either the Congress or the BJP has to be part of that government in JNK, and both the count on both the counts, both the parties, and there should be a very good okay. relation, balanced relation between the JNK and Delhi. Well, which is of greater and better interest for the Kashmiri people is now an issue that I want to have to. Look at.